Hello and a very warm welcome to the DXTL Weekend at Grassroots Weekend the show. I've got to get it right, haven't I? At the end of the day, there is no football, but we call it the Grassroots Weekend of show. It's because I'm grassroots football through and through. And I think each and every one of you know all about me with Don't Cross the Line, the respect programme, things that we do, the projects that we're working on non-stop, 24-7. But first and foremost, I'd just like to say the PFA, the Premier, the, the Players Football Association, I'm getting everything wrong, logo, I don't work with them, I don't represent them, but what they've done, I'm wearing this gear because I am wearing this gear for the run for Emily. They've kindly supported me for it. Um, it's a big thing, it's a marathon that we're doing. It's supposed to be 7th of February, but it's going to be held on the 28th of March. Fingers crossed because we don't know about lockdown. But it's looking good, isn't it? Because I'm starting to get the vibes, the feeling that grassroots football is coming back very, very quickly indeed. And if you look at the weeks, absolutely flying. We're nearly into February already. Monday, 1st of Feb. Wow. We've got loads of plans, loads of projects, and I can't believe the amount of work I've put myself through. It's just unreal. I've had an... A nasty, I'd say, well, look, I don't know whether it's an injury or it's just running. Talk to me physio anyway, and he just said, absolutely, told me what to do, how to get over it, and I've got to do a bit of a run maybe tomorrow evening, not too much, because I've done the half marathon. Yeah, a half marathon, Monday gone, and my knee, I thought it was going to collapse, I thought it was going to fall down on it, couldn't go up the stairs hardly, it was, it was horrible. Um, but you bring these things on yourself and there's no pain. What do you say? I totally get it wrong. No pain, no gain. That's what it's supposed to say. But I've had pain right the way through. I began about six months ago. Honestly, it started off on the back. I couldn't move my back. I was going and I, I pushed through it. I've not stopped whatsoever. I've really gone through the pain barrier, to be honest, and I've got a lot more to come. I know that in the future. But fingers crossed, I can get through it all, do this run, because after the run, yes, you know, another announcement. Going into Easter, we have, we have, oh my God, what am I doing? We're, we're doing a tournament and we're looking at Ellesmere Port and Whitby. We're taking over the 4G centres there. Anyone who's been there, honestly, the facilities are unbelievable. They're brilliant. That's providing lockdown is gone. We can just get on with social distancing. We know it's going to be a bit different. Um, the tournaments but I tell you what I've been involved in grassroots football for over 40 years I know what you want I know what the managers want I know what the kids want I know what the referees want I just know all about grassroots football and hold my head up high I've been there done it wore the t-shirt and I want to make these tournaments the best ever and they will be because we're eventually going to national tournaments I'm saying national I've had inquiries because we're putting up tournaments on for under 10 boys by the way and under 10 girls now, we started to get a lot of feedback last night off the girls' leagues, um, team managers getting in touch with me, wanting the details, loads of details, and no, we're having 24 teams in each, that's what I'm thinking, under 10s on the Saturday at Ellesmere Port, and on the Sunday, we'll have 24 teams, so it's play and finish. It's not going to be over two days, it's going to be one day. This is a trial tournament. We know it's going to work. We know we're going to get inundated. We're getting inundated already. I am. And then I'm going to hand it over to Paul Rukin. He's going to be the main man who's going to run the tournament with Matt. Sophie's going to be helping out there as well. We'll have one, one or two more volunteers. We've got people, Colin, who's been in touch already. He's on board for the Saturday and Sunday over the, the moon if we do the Saturday and Sunday because we've got the Friday, Saturday and Sunday and Monday all Easter. Now we know many referees out there are booked, many referees out there just can't be bothered saying it's no good for them under 10s, they want to do higher games, you do it. That's not a problem because we'll have higher games in the future, we'll have our team of referees and we'll use our team of referees who want to be involved with us. It's as simple as that. Um, and we're getting inundated. My phone, honestly, I've never had it so busy in all my life. So I'm, I'm not bothered. Who wants to get on board with us? When do you want to get on board with us? How do you want to get on board with us? But if you don't jump on the train, you'll always miss it, don't you? Simple as that. So you need 
to get involved if you want to be involved. Get in touch with myself, Mallow, at don'texpelines.com and there's a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites. Want to work with you? Want to work together? Want to be as a team? Because you get results, great results, working as a team. Now, the competition is going to be very, very friendly indeed. We're doing it. It's a respect competition, so obviously you can see where that's coming from. And the codes of conduct will be based around letting the referee referee. Simple as that. We'll be talking to managers, the parents as well, because don't cross the line. That is the work that we do. We want to keep our young referees within the game. There'll be young referees doing the games, by the way, under 10s. And as I say, we'll eventually go into bigger tournaments, different tournaments. We're going to have business tournaments. We're going to have, well, we'll give the age groups. We just don't want to get overexcited at the moment. But with the pitches, they're absolutely fantastic. And we'll be using Ellesmere Port first and foremost. Then we'll have the three pitches at Ainsdale. I've already had phone calls wanting competitions in Ainsdale, so you can imagine. It's 24-7 plus for me, non-stop, but that's me. I'm 18 years of being a not-for-profit organisation, working with Don't Cross the Line as a volunteer. I have my full-time job as well, keep that on board, and we've got massive projects coming up as well, especially with the youth project, with the kids. And um, We're looking forward to that one as well. We've got kids signed up, we've got loads of celebrities signed up, even actors from Hollyoaks, we've got celebrities on board, because what the kids will learn from our course the podcasting course because they're all in COVID-19, they disturbed, it's ruined them. We want to try and get these disadvantaged children in on board and they'll, the world's the royster. They're going to be loving it, I swear they're going to be loving it because we're going to give them projects to do where they can go out and do research on the celebrity or celebrities that we want them to interview at the end of the programme. And we've still got Liverpool and Everton football clubs to come on board. I think we've got a Zoom meeting next week. I've also got um, a, another project coming up. It's unbelievable. I won't tell you too much about that. Um, I've got a Zoom meeting again, hopefully next week. And DXTL are in talks, favourable talks, to have our own physio therapist as well for the sports injuries like I had through my run my back is absolutely fantastic touch wood touch wood everything is working fantastically well and we want to try and get our physio on board I don't know what I was doing then um, and that's going to be captured on the TV I can imagine DXTL TV from the touch lines I can just see it anyway the projects are massively um, going to benefit everyone that we we promise to work with everyone that we're working with and everyone that we're going to be working with in the future and we want probably one or two more volunteers uh, we looked after them as well and we've got Shannon on board as well our photographer honestly it's it's just not going to end you're going to see a massive massive difference with Don't Cross the Line the campaign work that we're doing is just unreal it really is and we're really going to town on the Respect Awareness Weekend we're just waiting for confirmation of Mike Riley and the PGMOL. We don't know how that's going to pan out. We really don't. But they've all got the T-shirts, all the referees, waiting for that one. And it's just exciting times, I must admit. I'm excited. I don't look excited. I'm doing a show, but I've got a million, a mountain of work to do. A million emails to um, get back in touch with. They're going off all the time. The phone's gone off all the time. Nine times out of ten, I missed the calls because it has to go on silent especially when I'm doing a podcast show. But hey ho, DXTL TV from the Touchlands will be very, very busy as well. And the kids will be busy work, working with us. Our volunteers will be busy working with us. Do you know what? If you've, if you've been involved with Don't Cross the Line over the years, you'll see the work that we've done. And obviously you're not with us anymore. You're going to miss out. I swear you've missed out. And it'll be one of those where you grit your teeth and kick your leg and... Why didn't I get involved? It's one of those, but things happen, people move on, and you can see me. I move on, and I've been in working with people who've come and gone right the way through the years, and we've got better and better and better. Not saying without that person, but it encourages to bring in the person who have developed something or other with us that don't cross the line. Hey ho, go on with your lives. We wish you all the best, all the enjoyment you can have, and the best of luck in your careers. Whether they pan out, that's down to yourself, isn't it? Not down to us. 
Anyway, we wish you the best of luck. But what we're trying to say is, we've got a million and one projects, so I've got nothing to do or worry about people who have moved on. Not in my life, not anymore. Um, I want to give the support to the people who are supporting me. I want to give that back. I want them to enjoy life. I want them to have the opportunities that we're going to be offering at the end of all these projects, which are fantastic, I must admit. Can't wait to get involved with Wayne closely um, and also Dan. We're just over the moon. It really is exciting times. For a not-for-profit organisation, a voluntary organisation, the work that we're doing, if you spent a day with me here and sat in that chair opposite, you can't see it, obviously, you can't on the WordPress um, podcast either, but if you sat there and watched the work that I do over the 24 hours, yes, you'd be amazed. It, it just gives... I inspire myself nine times out of ten. I have to. I have to because there's no one there pushing me. There's no one there telling me what to do or encouraging me to do what I do. I have to look and see what's going to benefit Don't Cross the Line, the Respect Programme and all our projects. And believe me, we're in lockdown. I did say a 2020 was a poor year, but we still carried on working and doing the things we do. I'm a key worker. I just do not have lockdown. I've got no time for lockdown. Never have, never will. I'll carry on 24-7 regardless. I won't let lockdown take over me. I really, really won't. I have the projects. I want to put them into action. And with the support I'm getting now, I'll put them into action tenfold, honestly. As I say, one child who benefits from our projects job done i'll be excited and we know there's going to be more than one child who's going to benefit and we bring along wayne who's going to do the shows as well shannon who's going to interview me and um, just waiting shannon to get in touch with me when she's available i don't know what to expect on the interview it should be a good one um because she did say she's not even going to tell me or let me have a sneak preview of the question so Little bit wondering. I'm wondering exactly what they're going to be because any other interviewees that we've had before, we would have sat there and thought about it. Because when you do have someone to interview, you'll you'll know that you have to do research because they have to see the questions. Yes, the questions that that person is going to ask, and you've got to agree with them because they don't want to be put in a position. It's going to be different when the kids all put the questions down themselves because they're going to research them, and it won't be. Did you go to a nightclub? What did you do when you were playing football? Who did you go out with? No, it's going to be like, what did you eat for breakfast? What did you have for breakfast? What were you like as a child when you were on the football pitch or you're running or whatever you were doing, whatever activity, whatever sport and activity you took up? They're the questions the kids are going to be asking. And we're excited to them or for them as much as we're excited for all the, the celebrities who are on board. I don't want to give you the list of them. It's just frightening who has come on board at the moment and there's going to be more and more and more and the projects are going to continue and continue and grow and grow and we're going to have more success stories with the kids honestly can't wait can't wait it is massively exciting times for Don't Cross the Line and don't forget as I said I do not work for the PFA even though I had LCFA coat on the other week voluntary don't work for them did do a little bit of work for them with young referees yes mentoring but at the end of the day, I'm going to do more for young referees here than what I could do outside on the football pitch, if that makes any sense. I'll still be helping the young referees. I'll be still carrying them forward. And no doubt, Liverpool County FA will be in touch with me and all the other county FAs because of the respect programme, because of the work that we're doing, the exciting times and the difference that we'll make within grassroots football as well. And as I say, talking to that coach today, or the secretary, a million and one jobs involved in grassroots football with over 2,000 children involved, 400 coaches. You can work out yourselves who it might be, but do you know what? We're going to work closely with them. We're getting inundated. My paperwork is filling up. I will have a secretary. I will have a young volunteer who's going to help me put everything into files, into place. We'll be looking after everyone who's who've come on board with us, I assure you. And we've got some great volunteers, as I say, with Paul, with Matt, and also with Sophie, who are working very, very well behind the scenes and will be in the future. Um, Paul's in charge of all our inclusion side as well, and Matt and Sophie will be doing that side of things. If you want to volunteer, get in touch with myself, Mal, at don't text the line .com, and I'll be in touch with you. Leave your, well, 
leave your details and I'll certainly get in touch with you. As I say, we just want more kids for this project, but you start next Friday. And Wayne will explain, you know, no doubt, come in and do a little bit of a show and we'll get the show on the road. And hey ho, you world's your oyster. That is one project on its way. Well, we're looking at this and we've still got, <coughs> excuse me, five minutes to go. We're talking again. You can hear my voice going because it's exciting. <coughs> excuse me, I feel better now. And if there's anything that you would like to ask us, you would like to get involved with, especially you children out there for our youth project, you better hurry up because we're starting, as I say, next Friday. So we've got a little bit of time to get in, in touch with it. And Wayne's going to be in touch with the parents and have a little conflab with the kids online as well. But it's not going to always be online. Those kids are going to be coming into the studio and we've got big plans for them as well. Got workshops to show them, got exciting things to show them. And do you know what? For those two hours, the kids are going to be loving it. We know you have homeschooling. Is it working for you? The kids I've been talking to don't like it at all at the moment. And I don't blame you because you like to be out there with your friends, going out, doing things that kids do. Um, okay, we're in lockdown, bit of a lockdown. I haven't noticed it much when I've done my travels and running. But it's what you say, what you see and what you do that's going to save you, isn't it? through COVID-19, but we can't be living our lives in lockdown all the time. There's going to be a time when the government just go, get on with it, like every other disease, get on with it, live your life, and you know all of yourselves, life is too short, and that's what I keep telling you young people out there, live it, enjoy it. You can't at the moment, or can you? But if you want to get involved with us, with our projects, honestly, there's a million things that you can do, and it's going to improve your life tenfold, I assure you. We've got schools, we're going to be in touch with, as I say, Zoom with Everton next week. Where, the, honestly, the other project I can't talk about just yet. I might tomorrow, if I get some feedback, if I get an e email, and I'll let you know a little bit about that one as well. But honestly, up to 16 year olds and what have you, it really is going to improve your lives. If, if you're looking at the future, to what you're doing at the future, what you want to do, I'm sure we can help you out somewhere along the line. So keep in touch with us. And as I say, add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites, including Instagram. I am really super not up. That is going to be extra special. You might have seen me. And I'm just getting used to it, to be honest. I've had it for ages and ages and ages and not used it. But honestly, we're going to get some followers on that. It's going to be unreal. So don't miss out. I've had to make it private at the moment because I'd like requests because for some reason, on Facebook, I'm getting a lot of people that I don't really work with, to be honest, and people that I would never work with. The very unusual requests, and I think there was one or two females who wanted to marry me because they're lonely, and, and, and I think you know where I'm coming from. And I don't know whether any of you lads are out there are recommending these people get in touch with me, but I don't know where they're coming from. I've had quite a few over the last few days I must admit and I'm deleting them as quickly as they come but as I say I don't know where they come from how they get to you it's annoying to be honest and no I don't want to marry any of them definitely not so I delete them very very quickly but anyway I don't know if you're getting the same thing if you are again I'd love to hear where they're all coming from how is Facebook letting them all come through to you I, I really don't know but as I say hope you lads out there aren't recommending any of them to me no, you can go and do one if you are, definitely, but walk away, I don't want to know. Anyway, we've got just over two minutes left on the show because we want to build it up. I, I may as well talk about, say, the performance for Liverpool Football Club against Tottenham. The players turned up, I'm over the moon, I was expecting it, somewhere along the line, you know what I mean, goals are going to go in and they're starting to take them now. We scored two against Manchester United, they scored a third. You know, OK, there was two goals disallowed, Salah's goal... I can't understand this one because, yes, it was handball. And what they say, it was so far out, they say the goal is disallowed. But if you're going to give the handball, why wasn't the foul given as well? Disallow the goal and give the free kick to Liverpool because it was a free kick. Why wasn't that spot and say, well, I can, that is a free kick. OK, start again. That would have been fair enough result to me because you can't give Spears the benefit benefit of the doubt twice. It was a, the worst foul I've seen in football, probably. Dragging Fabinho everywhere. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Why couldn't the foul have been given to Liverpool? Why did the game just stop? 
the goal disallowed. This is my opinion. This is not against referees. This is just what I wanted to know because VAR is there. I'd love to know why a foul was not given to Liverpool Football Club then in the first place. That was the game. The advantage was played on, wasn't it? I think so anyway. Anyway, I'm just over the moon that Liverpool Football Club are back where they belong. We've got West Ham away on Sunday and then we've got Manchester City. So let's hope we can put a string of runs together. I know we've got more injuries, but hey ho, we've got a big squad and they are champions. So I'm sure we can handle it and handle the teams that were coming up against as well. But I'm very excited and that's why there's a spring in my step today as well. But I have been proactive, very proactive and productive in the studio all day and I've still got a million, as I say, emails to answer back to. But all I can say to you is thank you very, very much indeed for tuning in to the Grassroots Weekender Show. We'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7. I hope you've enjoyed it. Put your feet up, relax, have a nice drink, stay safe, that is the main thing, and we'll see you tomorrow at 7pm. So for myself, Marley and all the team here at the Grassroots Show, don't cross the line and respect programme. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow at 7. Good night. God bless.